Um, so as part of my session today, uh, I'm going to give a quick um, overview about uh, one key component, which is the orchestration, right? Um, the reason being, um, to put it in simple terms, 5G is all about RAN, transport, and then the cloud, right? And uh, when we talk about new models, particularly uh, new workloads, uh, which is essentially the uh, ultra level low latency or the massive IoT or the EMBB, um, in order to realize the models, the whole infrastructure has to be more composable, right? Um, you would need to get the requirements from that of the business, and then you should be able to uh, build the network or build the infrastructure on the fly, right? Um, so what is going to be important is the intelligence um, that lies in the orchestration, which can essentially understand what is the business needs or the intent, and then it can create the infrastructure uh, based on the requirements, right? Um, so that's where um, I'm going to talk about. Um, so the rest of uh, the session, uh, I'm going to talk about a, a super blueprint uh, 5G. Um, also talk about a bit about ONAP, which is uh, open source orchestration, um, which is well adopted um, by few of the uh, telco chains. And then um, also touch upon edge orchestration, which is uh, again an important component because um, particularly to realize some of the models like URLLC, you do need to have network functions as well as the applications post near the edge. Um, and um, um, I will summarize um, putting all of it together um, on how to realize a true 5G cloud native based network uh, architecture. Okay. Um, so in this uh, slide, this slide uh, gives a complete ecosystem. Um, on to your um, left, you see user edge. That's where you have the uh, UE, which is the user equipment. Um, you have, we call it as a smart edge because the edge has to be um, smart enough um, be it from the intelligence to that of the data collection to that of providing or connectivity solution to varied um, devices. As you see, it's not just the mobile phone, it's about um, say AR, VR, it's about uh, automated car, it's about smart devices that has to be uh, brought into the network. So from that aspect, the user edge is a very, very important component, right? And uh, if you look at this particular um, user edge, you do have uh, some of this um, open source technologies, particularly on the edge uh, virtualization, and then you also have Fledge, um, as well as uh, Zephyr, uh, which talks about constraint device edge. They create the ecosystem. And then the next one is essentially the service provider edge, right? Um, this is uh, what I have been primarily focusing on. Um, particularly, I have been the uh, PTL for one of the project called uh, uh, private 5G LT, uh, which is under the Akraino project. And what we do here is uh, we tend to create um, all of this um, core, particularly 5G core, um, based on um, cloud native technologies. And then we do have an orchestrator, uh, which can essentially orchestrate um, the network functions. And then they can host it um, on edge or depending upon the type of uh, um, I would say the workloads that particular infrastructure need to support, right? Um, so the edge stack um, is primarily, um, you can say openness, which is again, uh, open source project from Intel. And then the Akraino, which is essentially a, a aggregator of many of the blueprints. And one of the blueprint is about private 5G and LT. And moving on to that of the cloud and core, um, another important company is the Magma, I believe, Many of you would be familiar with the Facebook connectivity solution called Magma. And uh, in fact, Takreno Blueprint, whatever I'm I was talking about, we uh, collaborated with Magma. Um, and from a cloud infrastructure perspective, um, I think this is quite um, self explanatory. Um, onto the cloud infrastructure, you have some of the components, which is essentially about um, the data plane, acceleration, and um, again, containerization. And then um, from a, again, touching upon the management orchestration, the global orchestration is primarily played by that of the ONAP. And um, of course the infrastructure or the resource orchestration is uh, played out by multiple um, stacks, including Kubernetes and OpenStack. I believe most of you are familiar with this platform. 
And then from a networking perspective, it's SDN controller as well as the tungsten fabric, which essentially does the network orchestration. But to put it in uh, simple terms, that's the super uh, blueprint 5G, right? Now, let me uh, dive deep into what we do in uh, the private 5G LT, which is again with uh, orchestration as a focus. This is a typical uh, private um, LT or uh, enterprise deployment, right? You have network core, and particularly in the US, uh, you do have uh, the uh, CBRS band, which is essentially accelerating the adoption of uh, uh, private 5G um, because it provides you the ability to uh, request for a spectrum. Uh, and this particular spectrum is primarily provided by what we call as a SaaS provider, uh, Google, Nokia, um, parallel wires or some of the SaaS provider wherein you pay them like few cents and then you would get the, um, you will essentially get the spectrum based on your latitude, longitude. So we leverage that. And um, when we talk about um, a typical enterprise, um, you do have, um, you do have multi-site environment, right? Because what happens is a typical enterprise, when we talk about uh, uh, having to have um, different workloads, you would have different edges. That is where you're seeing it as a network edge. And um, that's where the UE lands, right? Uh, now, the building blocks for this is, of course, the Kubernetes because we are talking about cloud native. And then the SD WAN in order to ensure you have connectivity with respect to that of the different network edges. And uh, on to the core, you have, uh, you can have a EPC for the LT, 5G core for the 5G. Um, that's pretty much hosted on the, on the core. But when we talk about um, extending um, some of these uh, network functions, particularly we call it as the app placement, then you do need to have uh, UPF, um, sometimes UPF, SMF, as well as the AMF, they are all hosted at the edge in order to service certain applications that are um, latency sensitive, particularly URL CC type of applications, right? That is where on the network edge, um, this stack would essentially contain Kubernetes again, openness for the edge orchestration. Then you have the CBRS that I was explaining. You have the UPF, then the edge apps is what is going to be mostly hosted on the edge. And then the SD even in order to connect, have connectivity to that of the core, right? So this is in a nutshell on how the typical uh, enterprise uh, 5G or an LTE network would look like based on our stack. Um, this is again the blueprint overview. This is just expanding what are the other uh, components. This is a different view, but to put it in uh, the orchestration perspective, you see the own app component that essentially would help you to host uh, the elements, the different uh, elements um, at the core as well as the edge. Um, moving on to the next slide. Um, um, the next slide would essentially talk about um, the ICN stack. Um, this is, if you look at it, uh, the hardware and the host operating system, they're well known, but um, you do have um, a bare metal provisioning via a combination of Metal 3 BPA controller as well as uh, KUD, right? That's essentially for uh, bringing up uh, any of um, the components right from the bare metal. And uh, there is another blueprint uh, which we leverage because that's the infrastructure um, blueprint. We call it as the integrated cloud native stack. This is again, primarily driven by Intel. And um, they provide us all the needed components. And then the, um, the orange components, which is essentially the um, LT 5G RAN, the VEPC as well as the 5G, then the application function integration as well as the UPS. Those are the components that we primarily focus on and that is being brought as part of the orchestration, right? Um, so that's, that's a simple uh, nutshell. Moving on, we looked at ONAP as a global orchestrator. You saw that it needs to work on a multi-site environment, but it's also critical that you need to look at um, the uh, local orchestration uh, wherein it can be an application orchestration, right? What is meant by application orchestration is cloud native is all about not just um, defining a microservice architecture. It is also about depending upon the environment, you are indeed looking to compose your applications based on the requirement, right? So that is where in this diagram, you see microservices being distributed across. So in this case, we piggyback on the ENCO 
there is again this is part of the openness which essentially helps us to drive the uh, geo distributed edge applications wherein you define the recipe on what you want and depending upon the driving factors which is essentially the constraints rather to say it can be about latency it can be about bandwidth it can be about proximity or affinity it can be about privacy right so these are being defined as recipes and depending upon the recipe the orchestrator instantiates the applications uh, along with the network function at the edge side in order to meet the um, use cases uh, requirement right when i say use case requirement it can be a use case of an ar vr right or it can be like a remote debug or in this example you see a smart city application right so now depending upon what is that you want the uh, orchestration takes in this input and then instantiates those components that are needed in, onto the edge sites and then um, brings up all of these components into it right so um, that's in a summary about um, what we do as part of this particular acrino blueprint um, as well as uh, how um, orchestration plays a very important uh, role in 5g um so these are some of the references which ca you can use as part of um, your research if need be and uh, if you have any questions you can always reach out to me